So this problem is from 10.2, uh, part three, and it says sketch the curve represented by the parametric equations, indicate the orientation of the curve. So they don't want me to eliminate the pattern, the parameter, they just want me to graph it, okay? Now normally when we're graphing with theta, theta is usually between zero and, pi, and two pi. So we're gonna assume that theta is between um, zero and two pi. And so we're just gonna pick some values here to figure out what's going on. Now since it's just theta, um, what I always like to do is um, divide divide this integral by five. Typically because there's five critical points on um, a sine and a cosine curve. So normally, like for instance, sine, you have the inter the origin here, then you have the height, then you have back to the x-intercept, then a low value, and then back to the x-intercept. So there's five main values in the sine wave, right? So I usually take whatever this interval is and I divide it by five, and that's the increments of my, um, or I'm sorry, I divide it by four, because it's just one, two, three, four, um, numbers. The fifth one is just where you start. So I take this 2 pi minus 0 and divide it by 4 and I get pi over 2 which means the values I'm going to use for theta are going to be in increments of pi over 2. So I'm going to start off first with theta equal to 0. That's the beginning point. That's this one. And then I'm going to continue adding pi over 2. Now this is important because had this theta been, um, let's just say for example, because I know you're gonna see it later. Let's just say it was asking me for two cosine of four theta, okay? That four theta would have to be between zero and two pi. And if I divide everything by four, that means that theta would have to be between zero and pi over two. And so when I'm figuring out how to segregate that, I would still have to divide over the four increments to get my key points. So that means I would end up using pi over eighth um, as my increments, okay? If this was six, then I would probably be using pi um, twelfths. If that's eight, I'd probably be using pi sixteenths. So it all depends on this argument here on what increments you're going to start off to get from zero to two pi or from zero to pi halves. Okay, but this tells you where to start and where to end, and this is how you figure it out. So let's go ahead and figure out what our values are going to look like. So we have two cosine theta. Now, I know what these are, but if you're confused, just literally type them in the calculator. So cosine, that's two, and then over here, two sine of zero, that's zero, and so there's my point. You could do the same thing, 2 cosine of pi over 2, you get 0, and then sine 2 sine of pi over 2, you get 2, so on and so forth. So you can keep continuing in that path, but I know for pi I'm going to get negative 2 and 0, for 3 pi over 2 I'm going to get 0 and negative 2, and then for 2 pi I'm going to be back at 2 and 0 because these two guys have the same sine and cosine values, okay? So let's graph this, because that's all I want us to do is graph this. And again, I'm not using graph paper, so my picture is not gonna look nice, um, like perfect, like the way they will in WebAssign, but it's okay. So two and zero is where I'm starting. That's my first theta. Then zero, two is up here. So it is gonna curve and it's going in that direction. Then from here, I'm going to negative two, zero. And again, it's gonna curve and I'm going in that direction. Then zero and negative two is here. So I'm traveling there, going in that direction, and then back to where I started. Again, it should look curved. And so, you know, it should look like a circle, but again, mine's a little bit off because I'm not fantastic at graphing and I'm not graphing on graphing paper, okay? But this is what the image looks like. It does look like a, um, a circle, 
okay? But it's oriented going counterclockwise. Now, down here, we have the definition of a smooth curve. A curve C represented by X equal to F of T and Y equal to G of T on an open interval I is called smooth when F prime and G prime are continuous on I and not simultaneously zero, except possibly at the endpoints of I. The curve C is called piecewise smooth when it is smooth on each subinterval of some partition of I. Now this um, is not going to be too much big of a deal, but this has to be assumed to start getting into the calculus of the parametric equation. But for now, everything that we talk about is going to be smooth, okay? So we can kind of assume this. Um, when you get into Cal 3, they'll talk about that a little bit more. But for right now, most of the time we're talking about smooth curves.